Today marks two decades and four months since the terrorist attack on September 11, 2001 took place. The people who witnessed the carnage left a soul-staring legacy behind them. The image of two planes crashing to the World Trade Center in New York has now been etched indelibly in public memory through many artistic works that captured the events of that day. Wislava Jimborska's photograph from September 11 is one piece that portrays the message that, while these painful occurrences cannot be undone, memorializing them may be best to honor the lives lost and the heroes who sacrificed. This essay aims to prove why this is so by using a critical approach from the standpoint of new historicism, a literary theory that examines this work from its historical context to comprehend its cultural and intellectual history. In the first stanza, Zimborska uses vivid imagery to project a specific moment in the tragic day when the victims jump from the burning buildings. She allows the reader to empathize with those who perish by conveying the attacks. The author of this stanza intended the readers to feel as if they were witnessing that fateful tragedy. The poem was written in 2002 and published in 2005 indicating that the imagery is the product of Zimborska's own raw experience as a witness to the tragic event. This stanza is meant to evoke collective shock and despair in the hopeless observers like Zimborska and New Yorkers. The second and third lines express disbelief at the gruesome sight by being vague. One interpretation is to reflect on the lives lost by looking at the picture of the tragic event. By starting the poem with this stanza, the writer sets a tone for the reader to remember the desperate souls lost that day. The second stanza emphasizes what was visualized in the first stanza. It capitalizes on this by explaining how the photograph suspends this tragic moment and provides us a dimension to connect with these people. A perfect example of this would be the famous photograph of the falling man, where a man can be seen driving towards a pavement with an eerie stillness. We can notice that the last line employs repetition and juxtaposition with the above describing a condition that does not imply movement and toward defining something that is moving. Another juxtaposition would be how it is stated that the victims are halted in life through the photographs. Still, the stanza also acknowledges a traumatic event in that they were falling towards the ground approaching their demise. These parts of the poem display the irony of a photograph capturing the event. It is still because it is a snapshot in time, but also documenting the last moments of people falling to their death. In the context of the period, we can understand this as a relating the powerful ability of a photograph to keep a moment in time, together with the subjects being documented, allowing us to commemorate them in a manner that was not possible during the tragic events of the previous centuries. The third stanza examines the established image, focusing on the victim's individuality and completeness. As stated in the first line, their bodies are still intact and not yet affected by the impact of the fall. The second stanza used the word particularly to describe each victim as a unique individual with their characteristics and loved ones. The line, blood well hidden, in the third stanza presupposes what happens after the photograph is taken. and implies that this will not be the case when the victims fall. Following this, the fourth stanza states how the photograph suspends time and in turn maintains the small details of the moment, such as the hair, keys, and coins. It adds to the concept of how the photograph encapsulates a tragic moment. The fifth line mentions how the victims are free-falling with the air's reach, referring to the air resistance experienced during freefall, and that they are above around the perimeter of the damaged buildings. Both of these lines describe the devastating event captured in the photograph. The final stanza expresses how the photograph emotionally moved the poet to immortalize these victims by remembering them in the poem. By not stating the eventual fate of the victims, it serves the same purpose as the photograph in that it commemorates the lives lost that day and suspends a tragic moment for us to reflect on it. In conclusion, the poem is a testament to how art can memorialize those lost during tragic events. Its central theme is that art can provide us a way to suspend these life or death moments in time and empathize with the victims. 
In understanding this piece as a product of its time and culture, the poem embodies the collective shock and despair that Americans felt during the attacks. These emotions would usher in a new period of patriotism within the country, changing its policies and culture forever. The attacks forever shaped how America and the world approached terrorism and immigration policies. It came to the rise of hate crimes and discrimination toward Islamic people. The poem is a snapshot of a transitional period in American and world history. Much like the photograph, it embodies the moments that silenced the world that day, and in these moments were the people who lost their lives and those who sacrificed them for the greater good. Thank you for listening to my essay, and this essay is dedicated to the victims of the 9-11 attack. May their souls rest in peace forevermore.